Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And here comes a top-notch comparison. I'm sorry I had to make that joke. It's the Huawei P20 versus the iPhone 10. Now, obviously, I had to make that pun or joke or whatever you want to call it because of the iPhone 10, which saw the continuation of a new trend, the notch. So the notch is something that you may or may not like already if you've used the iPhone 10 before or if you've just even seen it. After all, on the iPhone 10, the notch actually cuts the display a little bit and can cut into the content that you're looking at. But Apple also tries to make the notch usable in the sense that if you swipe down from the top on the left or the right, you'll get different elements. Swipe down from the right and you get the control center, swipe down from the left and you end up getting your notifications. Now the P20 does come with its own notch and it only takes up a small portion at the top, thankfully, not as much as the iPhone 10. However, there is another feature on here where you can turn off the notch, kind of. Uh, all of the elements at the top that line up with the notch just become a black bar. So you get more of a conventional experience where you get a little bit more bezel on top effectively. Now, if you go down below those screens, you'll see that a lot has actually changed. The iPhone 10 no longer has its iconic home button, and it also just does away with the fingerprint reader. The fingerprint reader does return in the P20, but it can also be used as the navigation key to tap, hold, or swipe in order to do everything that the soft keys do when you turn them off. Huawei's always been about unique colors, and now we have something called the Twilight Edition. It has a gradient from blue to purple, and it just looks incredible. Compared to the white or gray versions of the iPhone 10, the P20 is just incredibly eye-catching. And what's great is that all of the elements of the P20 kind of go over to the side so the color takes center stage. But why don't we go ahead and talk about those things in the corner right now. The iPhone 10 might have Apple's most advanced camera ever, but Huawei is putting all of its resources into the camera experience by putting pretty much everything together and trying to make them work in concert. Now first, the iPhone 10 features two 12 megapixel cameras. One is a regular sensor and the other is a telephoto zoom. Now combined, they are able to get a 2x optical zoom as well as portrait modes that you can also see in the front facing camera with different lighting effects. This is a little bit similar to the P20, the smaller one, even though its front facing camera is a whopping 24 megapixels and the rear cameras have a RGB and monochrome combination that allow it to get some pretty high detail like from the P10 from last year. But the P20 Pro is the world's first triple camera that adds in that telephoto lens on top of the two things we just mentioned. But the RGB sensor has been bumped up to 40 megapixels. That sensor also is one of the largest found in any smartphone, uh, larger than the iPhone 10 and even the Galaxy S9 for that matter. So Huawei, of course, will claim that the P20 Pro can capture so much more light in low light situations by using four pixels into one larger one. This means that the pixel size is essentially 2 microns, which is the largest in any smartphone as well. Now, AI is already helping to make the scenes easy to figure out as you just point the camera at whatever scene you're looking at, and if it detects a face, it will turn on portrait mode, turn on the bokeh effects for example, or if it's looking at a play of food, it's just going to up the colors and turn on the food mode. But in low light situations, the AI is also constantly cropping and warping anything that comes into its sensor so that it can make sure everything is lined up perfectly. So that means that for long exposures in low light situations, let's say a four second long exposure, which is what the night mode is on the Huawei P20 and P20 Pro. The fact that you don't even need a tripod is a big deal here because long exposures are hard to get in those situations where they're needed. And this is all on top of the 4D predictive focus, which uses four different versions of focus, laser, phase detection, contrast, and depth, and puts them all together so that the camera is able to use anything possible to get the focus it needs. Again, putting all of its resources together might actually be the way that Huawei is able to step forward in the camera photography game, and we're excited to put these two up against each other in a camera comparison. Jumping back to the front-facing camera for a bit, the P20 does have a very powerful 24 megapixel front camera, the highest on any Huawei phone to date, but the iPhone does its best to use its front-facing camera features, including face tracking and face ID, to provide an even more fun experience. And of course, we're talking a little bit about an emoji. There's no real equivalent of this to the P20 and it's something that we do have to mention because it kind of differentiates the iPhone 10 from pretty much any other Android device because it just doesn't have this kind of one-to-one -one tracking for something that might be a little bit silly but is effective for a lot of users. So all of these capabilities kind of explain why the notch is a little bit bigger on the iPhone 10. Uh, and again, if you don't really believe in the notch, well, then this is a comparison that might not really do anything for you. But again, on the Huawei, it does allow you to kind of turn it off, but there's more going on with the iPhone 10, simply. And ultimately what ties it all together are really high powered specifications. 
It's kind of hard to quantify the two as the iPhone 10 obviously has different requirements for what it needs for its operating system, and Huawei keeps things similarly in-house with the Kirin 970. The software experiences are also very different in the sense that Android versus iOS is an age-old debate, and as we've already seen in this video, the iPhone 10 just employs very different methods of navigation as opposed to Android which kind of gives you every option available. The day-to-day -day in these two devices should be fairly similar. You will be able to get a lot of the same work and play tasks done between these two, and really it's just a matter of which, which ecosystem you really want to use and what you want to look at all the time. And the same can go for the design. Some people have been able to embrace the notch, and the iPhone X is still a very popular device. But the Huawei P20 tries to marry all of the different aspects that people love about smartphones into one cohesive package. You have a great coloration, different colorways, you have a notch even at the top if you want to have have a more full screen experience, but you still get the fingerprint reader and the home button on the front. And then of course you get this great camera experience that tries to put everything together. So it really matters what you want out of your smartphone. And if you want quite literally everything, well, Huawei is really pushing forward uh, to create a flagship device that might be able to just do anything for everyone. And so there you have it, a quick comparison between the Huawei P20 and the iPhone X. There's a lot to talk about between these two phones because they do signify pretty radical changes in their lines. The iPhone X is a huge departure, but the Huawei P20 is also really trying to differentiate itself from other Android devices even. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for more about the P20 and we'll do future comparisons like we said already, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Head on over to AndroidAuthority.com and don't forget to check out all of our other places that you can find us. And remember that we are, of course, your source for all things Android.